Hi, my name is Susan Glover, and I'm going to be talking about the communication elements in A Walk to Remember. This is probably like my fifth time recording this because my four-year-old doesn't seem to understand that mommy's trying to record this. So I hope I can get through this all the way to the end. I'm about to the point where if he starts coming in and talking, I'm just going to keep going. <clears throat> In this presentation, I'll be going over the different communication elements in the movie A Walk to Remember. This movie is based off the novel by Nicholas Sparks, and the story is centered around two teens, Jamie Sullivan, who is the Reverend's daughter, and Landon Carter, who is considered the bad boy. They start a relationship, and like with any relationship, they have their ups and downs, but in the end, they both find that love conquers all. Most of the elements that I discuss will all be centered around Jamie and Landon. The first element is listening. And listening is very important when you are talking about good communication. And I think probably even more important than talking itself. In fact, listening doesn't just involve hearing someone talk. It can also include noticing and being aware of nonverbal messages. To demonstrate this element, I will talk about the scene from the movie where the main characters are out on a date. This isn't a first date. It is several dates into their relationship. <clears throat> Jamie is upset and is talking, trying to find a way to discuss what is on her mind. Landon seems nervous, almost like he thinks maybe she's angry with him and is trying to make small talk and crack jokes. In doing this, he is failing at being a good listener. He is interrupting her, not focusing on what she's trying to say to him and interpreting her message wrong and becoming emotional towards Jamie. Being a good listener could have made things so much easier for both of them but instead both get frustrated and part ways. Instead of being there for Jamie, Landon just made things more difficult and harder for her. Verbal communication. Um, it's actually speaking or using sounds to get the message across. It can really affect, be affected by the tone of voice that's used and this can really relay the message on whether someone is happy, excited, sad, angry, or so on. Verbal communication is both how you deliver and how you receive messages. <clears throat> A good example of verbal communication from my movie is the opening scene. A lot is going on in this scene and I guess the big thing is, is it's a group of teenagers and you can tell that they are carefree and excited just by how they are talking and the tone in their voices. Um, this is a group of popular teens, Dean, Landon, Eric, Belinda, and Tracy. And they are meeting up with another teen from their school named Clay. Clay is meeting up with them to do some sort of initiation into the group. And just by some of the verbal communication that goes on in the scene, it becomes very clear that Dean is the leader of this group. Um, he does make some smart comments and um, very sarcastic when Clay shows up late. Um, the things that he says, as you're late, I thought I said to be here at 10. When I say you be here at 10, you be here at 10, okay? You think you can remember that the next time? Obviously, I'm not an actor. So, <laughs> my tone may not be exactly like he done it in the movie. But, you can tell just by what he said that he is letting it be known that he's not going to tolerate anybody being late. Nonverbal communication is using things like gestures, facial expressions, eye contact, posture, and things like that to get the message across. It can be real obvious what a person is communicating without them even making a sound. 
Um, this movie is full of examples of nonverbal communication. It is, in fact, a love story. So you have your um, eye contact and smiling, touching, you know, laughing, all that stuff that you do when you're in love and things are going great. Um, you also have um, things that aren't so great, um, like the angry looks and stuff like that when people are mad. <clears throat> I chose a, a scene in the movie because I chose this scene because mainly if you were to watch watch it with no volume, you could pretty much tell what is going on just by the facial expressions and the body language. So in this scene, Belinda, one of the girls from the popular group, um, is trying to hurt and humiliate Jamie in front of the school. Um, she makes some flyers with Jamie's picture on a half-dressed woman's body with the caption, Virgin Mary. I have some examples below of what the flyer looks like. Um, to, to Jamie, this is very insulting. She is not the type of girl who would be dressed like that. And it's very hurtful to Jamie. But you can also see on the expression of Belinda's face in this scene that she is just very spiteful. Like she, she really does not approve of Jamie and Landon's new relationship and she's trying to let it be known. Jamie, on the other hand, you can see the hurt and how upset she is in her face. She starts to tear up and starts to breathe heavily. And you can tell she's trying not to break out in tears. Landon quickly comes to her rescue and gets in a fight with Dean over the way they treated Jamie and punches Dean in the face. Um, crap, sorry. Some of the nonverbal communication that is used in this scene was the facial expressions. And that can be seen when Jamie was getting uncomfortable and upset. And it was seen on her face. The body movements, Jamie turned to run away from the situation. And Landon and Dean push each other and get in an altercation. In space, Landon holds Jamie close as he tries to comfort her. And the distance between them shows that of an intimate relationship. Culture is my next element. And culture and communication can make things challenging. Usually culture is, um, when you speak of culture, you think of religion. Culture usually influences someone's way of thinking, speaking, hearing, and interpreting. And like I said, religion is like a big thing. I mean, that's the first thing I think of when I hear the word culture. <clears throat> Um, Jamie's character is shown as a very religious girl who attends church, sings in the choir, um, carries her Bible around, and this is a barrier at first to Landon. He sees Jamie as being unpopular and boring and just a goody-goody and feels that they have nothing in common. So this causes a, causes him to be cold and short with her. And he gets embarrassed to be seen with her in public and mocks her behind her back. So in this instance, culture has created a big barrier between Landon and Jamie. Interpersonal relationships. <clears throat> this is um, when you discuss interpersonal relationships, you will also hear of relational Dialect theory, also known as RDT. RDT is the constant changing state of relationships. And for this scene, this topic, I chose the scene to highlight novelty and predictability of Jamie and Landon's relationship. Novelty and predictability refers to the desire to have both predictability while finding excitement and spontaneity and mystery to relationship. Um, from the beginning of the movie, it it's very apparent that all of the characters 
see Jamie as this person who's very predictable. She does the same things and wears the same type of clothes and just is not a very exciting person. Landon provides the excitement and mystery to the relationship. <clears throat> with Jamie, Landon knew what he was getting. And with Landon, Jamie had this new adventure. Jamie was attracted to this sense of dependability and stability that he had with Jamie. And she was attracted to this sense of element and surprise and never knowing what was next with him. So I really think that the um, old saying opposites attract, it really, really is true, especially in this, um, this scene and this movie. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the stages of a relationship. All relationships go through stages. And the first stage is attraction. And this is where the desire to get to know someone better is. And this can be a platonic or romantic relationship. It doesn't have to be just a romantic relationship. Um, the next one is the development. And in this stage... It is to determine combat, com, compatibility. Excuse me. <laughs> if the feeling is mutual, there will be a desire to see the relationship progress. Intimacy and deterioration is the next stage. And this is where you enter the relationship or you... This is where either the relationship will grow or start to break down. Um, so you have your and the next stage is dissolution and this is the end of a relationship. I am so sorry. <laughs> but um, for the stages of relationship I kind of wanted to focus on after um, Jamie and Landon had this argument and they kind of parted ways for a few days Jamie comes back to Landon to apologize and then he quickly apologizes so they go from um, deterioration back to intimacy and eventually their relationship does end because um, Jamie does her illness does take over and she does pass away. So they actually hit all four stages in this movie. <clears throat> the summary of my elements. Listening is important. And when done effectively, it can make the communication more successful. Verbal communication uses sounds or speaking to get the message across. Nonverbal uses gestures, facial expressions, eye contact, posture to get the message across. Culture is a set of traditions, rules, beliefs, values, and standards of behaviors. Interpersonal relationships, deep, strong, or a close association between two or more people. And the stages of a relationship is, you know, relationships are always, always changing no matter what kind or how long, and it will all go through stages which is attraction the interest and desire to get to know someone development um, which is also known as involvement and that's where the where you work together to get to know each other by sharing more personal information about each other intimacy and deterioration intimacy is sharing your most important most personal thoughts and ideas deterioration is breaking down the quality of a relationship and dissolution, which is the end of a relationship. So my review, good communication is very important in getting our messages across. I have learned a lot and more than I thought I would about communication and learned a little about myself as well. One big issue I have is good listening skills. I'm a very busy single parent. Um, I've not been a single parent very long, so I'm still struggling with trying to balance everything. I work full-time, 12-hour days, and I go to school full-time. And um, that doesn't count, count my home life um, with my four-year-old. So 
it's hard enough and it keeps me busy so I'm really bad at trying to multitask all the time. So when I'm trying to listen to my child speak or even trying to listen to a live lecture, I'm usually doing a million other things in the background. This causes me to not fully hear the message that either my child or my teacher or anyone else for that matter is trying to tell me. I either have to have whoever is speaking to repeat themselves or listen to the same lecture over again. I also tend to want to speak my mind during a conversation as soon as it enters it and this can cause me to interrupt the speaker and it can cause me not to understand the message because I'm not letting the speaker finish or it can cause the speaker to lose their train of thought and might have a hard time finishing or getting their message across. It's also pretty rude. <laughs> I never really saw these problems in myself until this class. Um, it's almost like I've become more aware of the different areas that I need to work on to become better at communicating. I have also learned that good communicating involves good listening skills, and good listening skills do not always involve listening with your ears. Nonverbal communication is all about gestures, facial expressions, and body language, as I have said before, and listening with your eyes and being able to understand the speaker by their nonverbal messages help in effective communication. Um, that's all for my presentation, and I know I've kind of run a little over 15 minutes, um, but I'm sorry for any interruptions during that. As I said, my four-year-old does not seem to understand, and my phone is blowing up. <laughs> I try to cut it off, but that doesn't work. Um, anyways, thank you so much, and I've really enjoyed this class, and Thanks again.